Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. This is a new week and I know because of the great plan that God has for you, our confidence is this. He has a plan for you. He will give me a word for you this week. So that confidence is what puts me here, positioned to receive from him and to give to you. So I urge you to pay attention to what the things I'm going to be sharing with you this whole week. Praise God. And you will surely be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know what we do on each broadcast before we begin. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. I receive it. Amen. Praise God. Now, when you do this, expect a miracle because it will surely come to you. Now, you know, we've been talking about the wisdom of God's word and our main text is from 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And from verse 1, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes receive or desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He said, lay aside some things. Now, I know I've read this scripture, this scripture many times to you. But if you don't understand it, you're going to have a problem with understanding God, understanding the Bible, understanding everything about God. You have a problem with that. Why? Because most times the challenge people have is not that God is confusing or God is hard to know. The challenge we have most times is the, the image we have created of God in our hearts. And that image most times is refined or defined by certain factors that we have built as walls in our hearts. So Peter invariably is telling us here that lay aside all these things, remove malice, remove guile. Now, the thing about working with God is this, you know, John actually said, how can you claim you love God, right? When you don't love humans, when you don't love your fellow people. So if you see when your relationship with people is sound, it actually means to a great extent as if you're a child of God, a conscious child of God, it means your relationship with God is sound, you see, because people will begin to feel the impact of their relationship with God in their own lives. If, if you are fellowshipping with God, and you know God is wise, God is full of wisdom, now you will take up that wisdom and you, it will benefit the people around you. It's as simple as that. Praise God. So, it's so important that you're preparing to relate with God better have to do with preparing to relate with people better. So that's why it says, laying aside malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking. This majorly have to do with your dealings with people. So you begin to restrict yourself, apply great measure of self-control, do a lot of cleaning in your own heart so that you can receive that which is pure. You see, God is pure. But most times we interpret his personality and interpret his word by the evil thoughts or evil actions that we have embraced in our hearts. Now that's what makes this whole thing um, funny and confusing sometimes. It's not God that made it confusing. It's man that have made it confusing. God himself is simple. God is so simple to know. See, I'll show you something today. Why, why the Bible is important. Now, when I say the Bible, I want to give a broad 
understanding so you you get i don't want us to limit ourselves that's one challenge a lot of people have they've so limited themselves so their understanding is just so limited but i, I believe by the time we go in you you understand what i'm talking about thank you lord jesus let's read something jesus said in john chapter 4 john chapter 4 verse 22 jesus was talking with this woman he met at the well okay and then they had this interaction and of course you know the story he asked her for water and she was like ah, how are you asking me for water you know we don't have any dealings with you guys and jesus went on and then jesus made a statement here that i want us to pick a deep lesson from verse 22 jesus said to her i said you worship ye know not what now the new king james says you worship what you don't know okay because the woman was talking about let me read verse 21 first says, jesus said to her woman oh let me start from verse 19 verse 19 the woman said unto him sir i perceive that thou art a prophet our fathers worshipped in this mountain and ye say now when he says ye say you jewish people say okay but you say that in jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship now this was jesus reply to what she just said jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in jerusalem worship the father so there's been this argument that where do you worship God? Here in this Samaritan mountain or in Jerusalem. The Jews say there, the Samaritans say here. You <laughs> understand? Just normal arguments, just the same way it happens today. Praise God. And, and Jesus said to her, like, look, look, believe me. You know, that's the thing about truth. Truth doesn't take sight. See? Truth doesn't take sight. The Samaritans would believe that, look, we, are, we, we had encounters, you know, so because of those encounters, it's important we worship God here. Okay? Now, remember Elijah was in Samaria. Um, lots of things happened there. So, these people can literally say, hey, we've had dealings with God, so God is here. Okay? And the Jews will insist that, look, we carry the traditions of God, so God is here. So if you want to really worship the real God, leave that thing you're doing. Come over to Jerusalem and, and worship God with us here. Now, those arguments were going on. Why? Because of the things they have put in their heart. But Jesus said to us, it's listening. The time is coming when it's not going to be either in Jerusalem or in Samaria that we'll be talking about worship. But Jesus said something in the next verse. He says, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. And this is a very deep statement Jesus made here. Now, some people actually wish Jesus never made any statement like this. But so sorry, he did. And it's John that wrote this. John's very careful with his words. Yeah, John's very, very careful with his words. He, the writings of John are uh, writings that were from place of deep reflection. Now, of course, what he wrote here in, in, in this story, he wasn't there with Jesus. Remember, Jesus was alone with this woman. So apparently, he was writing from the report or gist that Jesus gave to, to them or to him. You know, he was very close to Jesus. So um he picked the important things that jesus said it's like i meet someone and then i'm coming back to explain to a friend that ah man talking with this man was really amazing like oh really what happened <laughs> you know i met her and i'm like oh look i, I actually was very thirsty you know when you guys left i i was really thirsty so i was just walking i saw this well and i just told myself that wow um let me just wait. Someone will definitely come and draw water here. And this woman came. And I just asked her water to drink. Oh, she started talking, plenty talk. Ah, I just said, ah, okay. I know what to do to you. You know, normal gist, normal things, how. And then I said to the, I said this to her, and she said this to me. I said, ah, 
I started asking the Holy Spirit, how do we, how do we arrest this woman now? See, then I just said the Holy Spirit, say, ask her about her husband. See, now, he, he, Jesus actually said this to John, that look, I said to this woman, you worship what you don't know. But we Jews know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. Now hold it right there. That's, that's where we're going to. That statement, salvation is of the Jews. Like I said earlier, some people really wish Jesus didn't make a statement like that. Because um, this statement alone, if you don't understand it, creates a lot of controversies. Because the Jews take it to their own advantage. The, the Gentiles feel no, I, Jesus couldn't have made that kind of, that kind of Jesus says salvation is of the Jews. Now that's the problem most times. It's not what he said. It's what they understood by what he said. That's always the issue. See? For example, Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And now there's an argument. Was he referring to Peter? How can he say he'll build his church on Peter? You see? No, he couldn't have, he couldn't have said that. He couldn't have meant that. Okay, so what did he say? No, he said you are Peter upon this rock. When he said this rock, it, now we try to introduce things just to suit a narrative that suits our understanding. No! He was referring to Peter. Simple. He was, he asked the question, Peter answered. And he said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And hey, Peter, I'm saying to you, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. The right question to ask is not whether Jesus made that statement or not. Because the reason people are asking the question is because they hardly want to believe that Jesus will mean he wants to build his church on a man. The right question to ask is not whether he made that statement or how he made that statement. The right question to ask is what he meant by upon this rock, I will build my church. What does it mean that I will build my church? You see? Now, that's the right question to ask. Now, same thing over here. Jesus simply said, Salvation is of the Jews. Okay, what did he mean when he said salvation is of the Jews? Now, this is why the, the Bible is so important. Why? Number one, it gives us, now when I say the Bible, I'm not just talking about these 66 books. Now, we are the ones that know this as the Bible, which is, it is actually. But even before this came, you heard me say that before, even before this came, there were several Bibles they had in the synagogue. They called them Bible. Yes, they did. But not 66 books like this, okay? Now, this is the one King James modified and called it, okay, look, we have, we have looked at different materials and we're able to put up this one. And putting up this one doesn't mean the one they did not put up is wrong. That's something you need to get into your mind. Because I've seen how this has become a challenge to a lot of believers, even pastors. Their mind is locked up. I say, if it's not the Bible, I don't want to have it. But, but just listen to me. Praise God. It's going to be an interesting week. Now then, I said, this is why the Bible is very important. Because number one, it gives us history. And what history, not just history of a people. The Bible gives us a history. Now, how does it connect to the Jews? I'll tell you. There is the history, the history of the Jewish people is from one man. And that man's name was Abraham. Okay? Yes, he's the father of the Jewish people. Now, Abraham had a personal contact or personal relationship with God. And he gave birth to a son named Isaac. Isaac gave birth to two sons named Ishmael and Jacob. And, and Jacob's name was later changed to Israel. Now, that Jacob that was his name, that, that, had, that became Israel, had 12 sons. And then these 12 sons formed the 12 tribe of Israel. Now, these are majorly 
these are the Jewish people. So the Jewish people came from, that's why I said the Jewish people came from Abraham's. You understand what, I'm, what I mean by that? They came from Jacob, then Isaac, then Abraham. Okay. Now, their life, because Jacob lived his life in connection with his grandfather, Abraham. Okay. And he was taught to follow the patterns of his grandfather, also the patterns of his father. Now, this is history, I'm, I'm telling you. So, this history is contained in the Bible. A whole nation came or was born by one man's relationship with God. This is not God stepping into a nation and choosing one man and doing some work with him. We're looking at a whole nation that was born by that relationship that God had with Abraham. And why is this important? Because this nation was born and God controlled or dictated everything they did as a people. First, as a family and then as a nation. First, as a family, you know God had told Abraham that your children will be in a foreign land and they will be there for 400 days, then I will bring them out. Now, they moved into um, Egypt, that's in Jacob's time now. They moved into Egypt as a family. But while in Egypt, they grew and they became a nation. So when they came out of Egypt, they were not just coming out of Egypt. As a family, they have become so big that they were forced to be reckoned with. They were now a nation. But you see, this whole nation was still controlled by the word of the Lord. They came out of Egypt by a prophet, not by some activists doing some independent moves. You understand what I'm talking about? They, they didn't go to United Nations and, and say, look, we've been in bondage for so long. Please talk to or put sanctions on Pharaoh so that he will let us go. They came out by the word of the Lord. They all came out as a nation. And then they were directed, even their settlement was by the word of the Lord. Now, this is why the Bible is so important. And this is the same reason Jesus said to that woman, salvation is of the Jews. Now, what he meant, he didn't say only the Jews will be saved. That's not what he meant. That's what I was trying to explain to you earlier. It's not the statement you should prove. It's still how to understand the statement. He didn't say only the Jews will be saved. What he simply meant is, if you want to understand salvation, look at the Jewish people more like study their history study where they are coming from why is this pointing you to study their life their history because their history was clearly a history of faith what do i mean a history of faith an encounter with god that culminated into all these tribes and this nation so if you need to learn something about God, it's important to study their history. Very important to study their history. Now, studying their history means getting every true material that has to do with the Jewish people in terms of their, their history. So in, in studying their history, you get to understand their tradition, how their traditions were formed. You need to understand what begat what. Okay. Now in studying these things as relating to their dealings with God, you will begin to develop certain wisdom in understanding the personality of God and how he relates with man. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, this is why you can never discard the Bible. And this is why you cannot just discard Jewish materials. Okay? You can't. Any material that talks about their history, you want to study it. You want to know. Because there are aspects. Now, I'll tell you last week. Every writer writes from an angle. Every writer has his focus. 
So you can't just take one writer and feel you've gotten everything you need to get. No, you can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. You get several writers. You read. You study. Then from this angle and this angle, I mean, like I said, you have a brain. You'll be able to tell. Number one, you have a brain. Number two, as a child of God, you've got the Holy Spirit. See, so when you're reading something that you know that is incredible, you know something was like, oh, come on now. Ah, no. And then you have the Holy Spirit that will also tell you, hey, that's not true. That's not what happened. This is exactly what happened. Praise God. Yeah. So examining that statement that salvation is of the Jews and looking into what he meant and then understanding God's wisdom in his dealings in history will make you understand why certain things are there today. Now, these are the things we're going to be looking at um, this week. And I pray the Spirit of God will help you understand because my time is up. Praise God. I pray for you right now that the Lord will fill your heart with the understanding of his truth. And I pray today that the Spirit of God will guide your steps indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.